everything I saw was new and exciting. Then came the breakthrough observation, because at that time it was thought that humans and only humans used and made tools, and we were described as man the tool maker. I left knowing that because of what I'd gained from the chimpanzees, now it was time for me to do something to help them. And I became an activist. We must learn to live in peace and harmony, not only with each other, but with the natural world. You hear very often, we haven't inherited this world from our parents, we've borrowed it from our children. We haven't borrowed anything from our children. When you borrow, you expect to pay back. We've stolen, we're still stealing, and we've got to do something about it. My mission is giving people hope. If our young people lose hope, there really is no hope at all. I simply call her, she's a walking angel. People just don't understand. Oh, she must have holidays. No, she doesn't have holidays. She never, ever stops. If conservation had rock stars, this woman would be Mick Jagger, Bob Dylan, John Lennon, and Elvis all wrapped up in one. So thank you. If we are arguably the most intellectual creature that's ever walked on the planet, how come we're destroying that planet? How come we're destroying our only home? Yeah, what I want to say is never forget that every single day you make a difference, you impact the world. Everything I saw was new and exciting. Then came the breakthrough observation, because at that time it was thought that humans and only humans used and made tools, and we were described as man the tool maker. I left knowing that because of what I'd gained from the chimpanzees, now it was time for me to do something to help them. And I became an activist. We must learn to live in peace and harmony, not only with each other, but with the natural world. You hear very often, we haven't inherited this world from our parents, we've borrowed it from our children. We haven't borrowed anything from our children. When you borrow, you expect to pay back. We've stolen, we're still stealing, and we've got to do something about it. My mission is giving people hope. If our young people lose hope, there really is no hope at all. I simply call her, she's a walking angel. People just don't understand. Oh, she must have holidays. No, she doesn't have holidays. She never, ever stops. If conservation had rock stars, this woman would be Mick Jagger, Bob Dylan, John Lennon, and Elvis all wrapped up in one. are arguably the most intellectual creature that's ever walked on the planet, how come we're destroying that planet? How come we're destroying our only home? Yeah, what I want to say is never forget that every single day you make a difference, you impact the world. Everything I saw was new and exciting. Then came the breakthrough observation, because at that time it was thought that humans and only humans used and made tools, and we were described as man the tool maker. I left knowing that because of what I'd gained from the chimpanzees, now it was time for me to do something to help them. And I became an activist. 
We must learn to live in peace and harmony, not only with each other, but with the natural world. You hear very often, we haven't inherited this world from our parents, we've borrowed it from our children. We haven't borrowed anything from our children. When you borrow, you expect to pay back. We've stolen, we're still stealing, and we've got to do something about it. My mission is giving people hope. If our young people lose hope, there really is no hope at all. I simply call her, she's a walking angel. People just don't understand. Oh, she must have holidays. No, she doesn't have holidays. She never, ever stops. If conservation had rock stars, this woman would be Mick Jagger, Bob Dylan, John Lennon, and Elvis all wrapped up in one. are arguably the most intellectual creature that's ever walked on the planet, how come we're destroying that planet? How come we're destroying our only home? Yeah, what I want to say is never forget that every single day you make a difference, you impact the world. When people look at what really goes on out in the forest, they have a totally new understanding of the, the dignity of the chimpanzees, the, the personalities come across. It's almost like in television series. They hug each other, they greet each other, um, they actually, you know, kiss each other. People don't realize that they're an endangered species like all great apes that in fact chimpanzees are going extinct in the wild. It's been estimated that chimpanzees cannot survive more than 15 to 20 years unless we do something right now. Logging companies, all foreign, go deep into the heart of the forest. They make roads. The roads provide access. And hunters go in and they shoot everything. The bushmeat trade is the commercial hunting of animals in the forest. It can wipe out the wildlife in a forest even when the forest is left standing. You have chimpanzee adults that are killed to provide meat for either people in the rural areas or those in the cities. It's uh, estimated to be a billion dollar industry. And it has its tentacles into every continent on Earth in terms of uh, the flow out of Africa. Chimponga is the JGI sanctuary that's located in the Republic of Congo. Chimponga represents the largest sanctuary in Africa. And uh, it holds the largest number of chimpanzees. Chimpanzees face a variety of threats. One is that the very habitat that they live in, the forest, is being destroyed. And that's mostly communities going out and cutting, you know, forests for either firewood or to have more land for agriculture. We were clearing uh, the forest to be able to plant. And what this was doing was reducing the range of the chimpanzees in Gumbo.
helping chimpanzees requires more than just putting them in a park and protecting them. We have to deal with the human populations. We need to provide them with alternative livelihoods so that they don't look to the forest for charcoal, for wood to sell. Communities in this area are very poor. Um, you know, the in average income of most of the people who live in Kigoma is about $150 per year. They're so involved in trying to get an income so they can feed their families to live even just one day. And so you have to work with the communities to, to meet their day-to-day -to -day needs so that they can actually think about long-term conservation. Takari, or as Jane says, Take Care, is a program that works with local communities and local people addressing their needs as part of our conservation strategy. The way you do that is to focus first on their families, for example. Their children need education. They need health care. Uh, the adults need a sustainable livelihood, so we work on helping them with farming practices or helping them to export products like coffee. I think the success of the Take Care program lies in the fact that right from the beginning, it wasn't a bunch of white people walking into a village and telling them they were sorry for them and they knew how to help them. The program basically is run by Tanzanian staff 100%. They know the local situation. They're able to engage with the local community in the language that um, you know, they're able to understand. Very often uh, local people don't know maybe how to read maps, but they can read images, satellite imagery because they can see the house, they can see the footpath. Um, we have people telling us uh, very detailed on the map where they collect firewood and do farming. So suddenly um, you can develop this common understanding of the landscapes. You can see and you can track where the forest is intact, where it's being cut down. It provides a great early warning system when villagers are going into new areas to begin to cut down the forest. It also enables you to monitor forest growth. By showing villagers these satellite imageries, showing them where they live, where the forests are, we can enable them to do their own land use planning, to put part of their land aside for local community forests. It's a powerful tool to be able to work with local communities in addition to improving the quality of our research. Whether it's clean water, education, health needs, HIV awareness, all of these things that we do to help the communities around chimpanzees make their communities more stable and they are less susceptible to gorilla influences. When forests all over the world are in crisis now, we are in danger. We need to act now. The youth are the ones who have the optimism, the energy, the willingness to have open minds and open hearts. Uh, they're the ones who can really change the future. My desire to work with children led to this program, Roots and Shoots. Roots creep under the ground, make a firm foundation. Shoots seem small, but to reach the light, they can break open a brick wall. And the brick wall is all the problems we humans have created from cutting down the forest, spread of the desert, overpopulation, pollution, and then human greed and cruelty and crime and war. It's starting young and it's getting these kids used to doing projects and caring about what's going on in the world and they're going to turn into our leaders someday. I think the most important thing to realize is that I could kill myself raising money for chimps trying to save forests or whatever. But if we're not raising the next generations to be better stewards than us, what's the point?